Hi, Ian Roberts, and welcome to the Laboratory of the Painting Process. I call it that because, you know, when you see a finished painting sometimes, you wonder, like, God, how was that done? What is the process, the alchemy that allowed that to happen? And one of the parts of that, of course, is planning in advance, and I wanted to talk today about thumbnails. Um, most people are hungry to start painting, to get brush to canvas. One of the reasons is we probably don't get enough time to paint, life gets in the way, and so when we finally do get a chance to paint, we want to just get started. Now I teach or have taught for workshops for years and years and years, and I emphasize structure and composition and recommend that students do thumbnails before they begin to paint. But you know, the van door opens, there's cypress trees and vineyards and old stone buildings and sunshine, and they just want to start. They're impatient. So here's a couple of thumbnails uh, from students on workshops. And these aren't so much bad paintings, is they're just inattentive. They're rushed. They just want to get paint to canvas. And so they're not really serving any function. And what I wanted to do today is to talk about thumbnails and how you can make them functional tools to use before you begin to paint. So that they are, rather than using the word thumbnail, I think the idea of a road map is better. You know that expression, you want to have a map before you go into the woods. And so the road map is sort of looking at the main structure, the main shapes, the main emphasis, and the main contrast. So it gives you a sense of where you're going before you start. So I'm going to do one now for you so you get an idea of how a road map looks. So here's the image. And what I want to do is emphasize two or three things in drawing this. Um, I'll probably draw it a uh, do it about that size, but I, I want to look at this line of buildings, you know, that are kind of coming through the landscape, stepping up here. Uh, a mountain that comes down here, a second one, what I want on sort of a different angle, and then foreground, which has this nice entrance, that vertical in here, coming back to here. Now, this is the foreground. The buildings and these trees here, and even those trees there, that's the midground, and that's where all the information is going to be. Everything behind the buildings, this and this, that's background. That's clearly background. You can see atmospheric perspective beginning there. But this here, I would flatten that out so there's hardly anything happening. I wouldn't blue it because it's not far enough back for that. But atmospheric perspective is something that if this is background, you simplify it to force it to be behind us. Not behind us, but, you know, in the distance. Uh, so I'm just going to quickly draw this in to give you a sense of it. I don't want to take a lot of time drawing it in. I mean, enough so it works, but not so it takes too much time. We're starting to get the sense. And see, all these things are overlapping here, and I want to get the sense of those objects going back into space, overlapping one, after the next, after the next. That is almost enough there to give us a sense of it. Now, as I say, this is one big, pretty simple, flat shape back here. I don't want to be getting into doing painting trees and grasses and things back there. The buildings are all in shadow except for the roof. Shadow, shadow, shadow. Then there's a real dark on that door against the light of the road there. A real dark on that um, hedge. Bit of a thing in a window here. This has darks, there's shadows. This big tree, there's shadows running across the roads here. Across here, a bit of dark there. Of course, there's darks running across here. 
darks here. I'm doing this pretty quick, but I just want to give you the sense of what I mean by this roadmap. So here we have a simple shape, shape, shape. The foreground is very simple. There's a color for this, color for this, color for this, different shape here, different shape here, all different colors. And then these darks and these overlaps, you delineate them all. You delineate these darks, you delineate these, but you'd really start pulling our attention into here. This is where I would want you to go. And so the strongest contrast, even though you have contrast here and contrast here and things moving us around, now you've got a sense of this is the structure, the vertical, the horizontal, bringing us into here. So I'm going to get the strongest contrasts here. I'm not going to eliminate the contrast in other places, but I'm going to make sure the strongest contrasts come here. So now I've got a road map of how I want the eye to move, and I can tell if I'm starting to get too dark out here, it's going to start saying, do you want me to be here or do you want me to be here? And I want you to be over here. And so that's how the roadmap would work. So here's a second image. You can stop the video and just try it on your own from this image. I hope you find that helpful. And then next week, I want to look at the idea of diagrams. A diagram is not a drawing. It literally is a diagram, just outlining where the different objects are in space that you look at, that you draw, before you begin painting. It doesn't take very long, but it just ensures that you know where each thing is sitting in space. Because I can't tell you the number of times I've seen students confused because they don't actually know the th where the thing they're painting is sitting in space. And to get to carve the sense of depth on a picture plane, everything needs to sit somehow within that illusion. And so I'll just show you how you can do that quickly next week. So have a great week and um, bye for now.